Welcome to the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top leaders who share stories on how to successfully systemize a business. Now, let's get started with the show. Hello, Adi Klevit here with the System Simplified Podcast, where we interview top entrepreneurs, founders, and thought leaders about systematizing a business. And this podcast is being brought to you by Business Success Consulting Group. At Business Success Consulting Group, we create custom processes and tailor-made business systems so businesses can thrive and grow. All right, and today's guest is Hilary Key. Hi, Hilary. Hi. It is so awesome to have you on this podcast because we're going to have a unique conversation today. We're going to talk about processes, but we're going to talk about your business, which First of all, I'm going to introduce you. So you are the founder and CEO of Art Steps Inc., which um, it is a school where you teach 1,000 students per week classical, realistic drawing and painting skills in three locations in Orange County, which is yeah. an incredible business. And it's all about art and teaching the next generation about art and helping them be creative. <laughs> So we're going to talk about how you use systems and processes in order to scale the business and open three locations. And you've been in business for how many years now? Uh, 22 years, since the year 2000. So we've been around a while and I achieved exactly what I wanted to. And then once the um, pandemic hit, we created an online program and we have that available now as well, which I'm obsessed with. Uh, so we are... Um, yeah, we're very grateful. I'm excited to be at a time in my life that I can be growing the business and um, where I think when I was younger, I wanted to focus on the kids a little bit more, but I'm happy to say we have an extremely strong, stable base um, to go even beyond where we are so far. And I want to say thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. And I'm actually a fan of the podcast. Well, you're very welcome. And thank you. So let's start talking. How did you get started on the business? So it was 22 years ago. How did you get started? Yeah, so I was teaching. So I, I have an art degree. I actually went to a school without grades. I have a degree from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And so my degree was in uh, conceptual and um uh, abstract painting and performance art. And I decided that I didn't want to do that after I graduated. So I went and just started teaching. And after a year, I approached my partners and asked if they wanted to go into business together. They weren't my partners at the time. They were my bosses. So we got started together. They taught me everything I know. And um, they created the curriculum. And I was able to take kind of what they did and um, create multiple systems over a long period of time, learning what works and what really doesn't work <laughs> uh, through trial and error. So we're, we're proud of what we have so far. Yeah, absolutely. So you started with, obviously with one location and then it, you opened another one and another one, right? And so, you know, when we had a conversation, you talked about how much you love systems and why systems and processes are so important. So why? Why systems are so important in order to grow a business? Absolutely. Yeah. When I met you and learned about what you do, I was, I got so excited <laughs> because um, that's kind of what I'm obsessed with. And I don't get to meet a lot of people who are also obsessed with the, with the business system. But to me, um, the inside of a business can be as beautiful as a painting. I, I find the business side as much a creative endeavor as art making of any kind. It really is. You just, your medium is systems and people. So that's all a business is at the end of the day and a set of beliefs that, you know, the people have and habits. So um, I believe, and I've got a lot of mom friends. I think all of us kind of know people that have sort of started a business on the side and they're, you know, they just kind of, kind of give it a shot. And I've, I've noticed sort of who, um, who, who sticks around and who doesn't. And I think it's whether or not you're going to treat your business like a business. And we have, something that you might look at as kind of a touchy feely business. We're working with kids, we're working with art. It seems like a soft uh, genre, but um, a business is an entity. It's an organization, like an organism or an organ, it has to be organized. So I think that actually having a business is a perpetual system, creation, organization, creation, organization. And I, I learned over the years, like I feel like I've learned to be organized through pain. So. Uh, 
I sort of think of it now, and I've seen times that we've done better and times that we've struggled. And I've noticed that any new thing that happens, any new business is like a little plant. And when you first start it off, like you can do it all yourself. That's how I started. I did all myself, everything from running the office, teaching all the classes, cleaning the bathrooms. I did it all and um, quickly, quickly grew and uh, started my first, my first employee was someone who I uh, wound up becoming an, an artist as well. She helped me to sharpen the pencils and clean up. Um, so I've, I've, and what I, the first thing I did for her is make a checklist, but um, back then it was like a little plant that I could, I could see all the pieces. And I think that's every business, you know, talking to a lot of people, you can digest it all in your head. And then you feed and water it and it grows and there comes a point it gets complicated. When it's organized, it grows. When it gets complicated, you have to stop and prune it back and systematize, organize, or maybe even physically clean. That's another aspect of things. So there's what's inside of the computer and there's what's outside of the computer. Money is not attracted to messes. I'm convinced of this. Uh, so once you find out you have to reorganize something, it's going to be an uncomfortable space. And I don't think there's a business out there that doesn't recognize that feeling, right? I, or anybody who, who either has tried to set up their own thing, it, there's, it, it hurts. You know, it's so true. And, and the way you explained it, it's kind of like, I mean, I, I'm, the way you explain how you actually find the beauty in systems, which is true because it brings order. And order is always beautiful, right? I mean, you can have chaos, you can have a chaotic business, but then when you bring order and things fall into place, then you feel really good about it and you feel like you're progressing somewhere. Oh my gosh. So, right? Oh, I just, I just want to say it infuses energy into everyone and it gives everyone a safe space to be creative, to do what they do best when they're not hitting static and mm -hmm. problems interacting with each other or certainly customers getting back and forth, you know, you don't want that. You want a clean experience, but that it matters internally deeply, right? Because every person has their own, their own uh, experience that they're now putting on everyone they're coming in contact with. So if they're frustrated, it's going to come out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me, Hillary, what will be, how do you utilize the systems and the processes in your business? And how did it help you to actually scale to different locations and increase your business and also pivot during COVID, like when you needed to. Yeah. So day one, we put in a, a checklist. I, I remember I worked with one wonderful, beloved mentors and partners who, again, they taught me everything I know about teaching art and, and about running a business. And I know that to start the business, we had some checklists, but within the business, it was like, well, just clean up, just hire someone to clean up. But exactly what does that mean? So just starting at that very simple level, we made a checklist. It's really very simple. I remember th thinking that was, <laughs> that was so revolutionary at the time. So we go by uh, seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, the stewardship delegation, if you know, if you haven't read that book, it's a required reading. Um, but um, I, and we base everything we do off of that book at, at our core. Um, but uh, the green and clean is um, the system that we use for everyone. I started with the teacher's aide, who's just the person that, you know, cleans and sharpens pencils. So um, we make sure that every position has all five elements of a stewardship delegation. So that is, uh, the objectives that we make sure that they can repeat back, uh, their guidelines, their accountability. When are we going to come back and look at this results? Like what exactly what results are we looking for and consequences? And so what's built into every position now all the way up. So we have multiple, multiple, multiple job descriptions, which is our objective. Then we have a support document um, as well as certain onboarding and promotion checklists that we make sure to go over in person, um, certain values. So we make sure that they all know exactly what, oh, resources. I don't know if I missed that in there somewhere. I think I did. Sorry if I said five, the five wrong, but um, we make sure that they know kind of where the pitfalls are and what they, what resources they have to use, um, what, any guidelines that they need to think about. Um, and then we have a regular meetings, you know, accountability and so forth. But I think, that the other piece of that is that we cultivated a culture of, and it's e-myth. I mean, this is really basic stuff, but when you work in the job, work on the job, but what does that mean? How right. do you on the job? 
And then once you go into a creative space, you start to make a mess. Okay, that's normal. Then we come back in and we make sure that it follows all of our cultural norms. So everyone in my company knows, oh, we caught it in a conversation, put it on your checklist. And we make sure that they know. And I think we talked about this too a little bit. It's so funny. We use the same language. If they get hit by a bus. Yeah. You learn that because people quit, but also, you know, in our company, we hire a lot of young people out of college and mostly young women. And we realize the bus is a baby (laughs) over time. Like, okay. Or the bus is COVID, or maybe you want to take a vacation. Maybe you would like to be sick with anything and not have to worry about what's happening at work. So every single thing you do needs to be documented down to, it sounds, I'm making it sound kind of um, too type A, but in actual fact, it's an enjoyable process for the staff. Let's talk about that because I know a lot of people, especially in the creative world, they feel like it's it's a burden, right? It's something now they're supposed to and they and they feel tasked with doing that. How do you overcome that? So we're, we're kind of, you know, hearts and unicorns over here. And um, we, we think of it as a kindness because nobody wants to walk into a situation where they're lost. And we know that business is a little bit fluid and you could wind up doing a piece of someone else's job for a minute. In fact, we have our positions always set up where we have a pinch hitter. And uh, so you can always know that if something happens to someone, there's going to be someone else to step in. We don't have anybody who's irreplaceable, although everybody's irreplaceable. We love them to pieces. Um, For but sure. You wouldn't want to do that to someone else, right? You know, uh, that's, a, that's the best. I mean, I don't think I had a guest on this podcast say that, but it is so true. It's just like you look at other people and you do it from uh, kindness to them so they're not stuck with your job and kindness for yourself. So you can actually take that vacation or if you are sick, then you can be sick and you can take the time to recover. Or if something happens or somebody decides to move to another place or do something else, it's okay. But it's that kindness and looking at the entire picture And I love it how you actually align it to your core values and who you are in order to make it really not something that is alien or hard to do, but something that is fun to do and can be done together with the rest of the activities. And for me, it starts starts with leadership. So if the leader is just, oh, remember this, remember this, and then, oh, okay. I'll, I'll put this on my checklist, put that on your checklist. And after so long that they, they know they need to put on their checklist, they need to put on their calendar. So every, every position has these three things, their job description, their support document and their checklist. So that's all in their folder for their, um, for their position. And then they all have a calendar and usually it's done. We, we go back and forth uh, a little bit, but we, we learn that we make a checklist of what goes on the calendar and then they, they may have things, but they're, able to kind of look it over once a month and make sure everything is all the pieces are collected um that's and- beautiful how do you how do you make sure that it's followed by all that you all follow those processes and procedures so um this is fun because uh we now have an operations manager who was our um she had a different position before the the, the break but we've brought this in recently and it's working so beautifully um our operations manager is our chief organizer So it's meant to be owned by everyone, um, but we want consistency and continuity across the company too. So we don't want to just relegate a job to someone and say, well, you're the expert at it, do it your way. My uh, brother um, is our CFO now and our accountant, and he's worked with multiple, um, multiple companies and actually retired early. He's a very successful guy. So he's kind of working with us um, now, uh, on a part-time basis, but he's perfect. And he said with everything he's seen that we have the best culture of accountability to get these things done. Um, and the reason and I've lost my train of thought on how I got to him, but I'm so proud of that. Uh, this is the best compliment he could have. We were talking about the culture and how can you, how do you ensure that it's actually being followed by all? So, yeah. So we, we mentioned it on onboarding as part of their values. And then we also just have a habit. It's just certain things are habitual and cultural in your company. And this is something that's burned me so many times that I do not let people forget. But now also our operations manager is going through because there's 
there's making sure that their checklist is up to date. And look, it's going to come and bite you later if it's not on there. You know, if it's not on the checklist, you're going to feel it eventually. Um, even if it's the, the following year or something like that when it came up. But she also goes through and meets with each department head for an hour every six months or so. And we go through their, so we use Dropbox and she'll go through and like together they can see where there's clutter, where there's waste, where there's hoarding. I say, you know, we are not, we're not hoarders, even digitally, because every folder should, you should feel relaxed going into your folder. I remember the nineties when anything to do with a computer was inherently stressful. Do you remember? Absolutely. Like they didn't have, so I'm taking a cue from Apple, right? Let our business be that elegant from the inside out. And so she'll go through and that way we don't have maybe one person using Google Docs over here and one person using Trello over here for the same purposes. She'll go through and just make sure that we're keeping things um, uniform so that wherever I go or wherever she goes or anyone else in the company, you just kind of know how to go in. And uh, yeah, it's easy. Hillary, that's amazing. It's again, you are bringing aesthetic into process documentation, which is just beautiful because that just makes it everything clean, nice, to the point and getting to where you need to be. And it is just such a beautiful explanation of that. Yo, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now you mentioned the future. You mentioned that, you know, you are right now have a thousand students and that was, I know, a big goal of yours and you hit it, which is very well done. What does this future look like? Oh my goodness. Yes. Our, our online program. And I would love to open up at least one more studio, possibly start looking at going out of state. Now that my kids are grown, I'm feeling a, a thousand percent in and, um, the, um, the online learning that we're doing is so far beyond. We're not doing like a video course. We're actually interacting in a really responsive way with kids, which I believe they deserve. If they're anywhere online, they deserve at least a good chunk of the time, a human being who cares about them and who's going to stick with them for a few years. So, and who can really give a uh, solid advice because our students are amazing. If you you can look up their work. They, they, what they wind up capable of is crazy. So I am sure so they are. So give me, give me your, this is a great opportunity to give our listeners your website so they can go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. It's artstepsclasses.com. Make sure to put the word classes. So art is singular, steps is plural, classes is plural.com. Or if you just want to look at the online program, you can go to artstepsathome.com. And we are, um, yeah, every day learning that it is very interesting, actually creating something new. So what I was doing is looking at someone else's sort of just the curriculum model and then just having a blast, you know, well, it's blood, sweat and tears, really. But I think we did. We definitely had fun with it over the years. And, you know, it's up and down, but uh, really made a project of building the business. And now I feel like we have the structure to create something of our own. So I'm creating that curriculum and it's interesting how the creative experience really is messy. It really is. You cannot think about creating and organizing in the same breath. In fact, in painting, we call that the creator and the critic, the creator and the critic. So the creator just goes and they don't worry about editing what they're doing, but the critic has to come in at some point. I think we've all, all seen art that hasn't been criticized internally by artists, you know, you think, okay, you know, but if you come in and you think, all right, this needs to come higher, this needs to be lower, let's get this looking the way that we think it should look. You can't worry about should on the creative end, but you must think about should and step back, let that be another person. So you're doing this all the time. Let yourself be fully in creation and then fully in organization. And it's, a question of how frequently you toggle. So creating this new thing for me, it surprised me how messy it got because we had new technology that came in and new needs and new solutions. So the systems that we had weren't perfect. And now, okay, well, how do we label things within the CRM? And what does this replace elsewhere in our business so we can avoid things being redundant? We're, we're obsessed with things like little things like don't name something new. <laughs> it's not going to make sense later, right? Give that gift to the future self, right? Or don't use a template. 
resave what you use so that you only have one version of everything. Is that, that's what I mean. Don't save things in two places, save it in one place. And then maybe where you think it should be saved, direct them to the first place. So you're only editing one document, things like that. That kind of thinking, like going into quickly changing systems, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's interesting. Yeah. So we're, 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 I, I'm like, I want to be in the creative space, you know, with everything with marketing and with creating the program. And I have to kind of pull myself out and, okay, we're going to, we're going to pare back what we don't need. At first, you don't know what you don't need. So it's, I think it's okay to be in chaos for a time, as long as you know, organizations on its way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as you expand and grow and explore new things, there will be more chaos, but you just put more order, more order in until you have that state that you, that aesthetic, beautiful state of organization, and then you move on. So that is amazing. Hillary, this is, this has been such a great conversation and you really brought the aesthetic and the art into processes, which is, I so appreciate that. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Adi. This has been such a gift, uh, such a blast to get to speak with you today. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the System Simplified podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.